Hi, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Extreme Performance Series video blogs, uh, where we bring you the latest and greatest performance information. Uh, I'm happy to introduce one of my peers today, Karthik, uh, who works in the performance uh, engineering team with me. And we're going to talk about some interesting stuff around Project Monterey. So uh, first, Karthik, why don't you give yourself an introduction? Um, hey, all. I'm Karthik Ganesan. I'm part of uh, the performance team, and I work on Project Monterey uh, performance aspects. I'm also, you know, uh, worked on Project Tanzu a lot in the past. Um, so today we'll focus on uh, the Monterey. Awesome. And for let's set up kind of what Project Monterey is for those, uh, because we may not remember. So in its initial release here, we're talking about offloading some of the network services to SmartNICs, and basically we're turning, you know, some of those cycles to the hosts. So we can offload uh, some of the network processing that happens on ESX. Uh, to the smart things. So I hear you have some uh, a cool set of data to share with us today. So why don't you uh, pop that up, Karthik, and let's see what you got. Before we get into <clears throat> some of the data, um, you know, let me let me show a little bit of a peek at the setup and the kind of experiments that we are targeting do here. Um, so we have two ESX hosts here. Um, let's call it ESX host A and ESX host B, each with one TB memory. So um, both these hosts have um, some smart mix on them. We use 25 gig smart mix for uh, this particular evaluation. And they also have a comparable performance nickel. Um, the idea is, you know, we want to run a workload like uh, Redis uh, to measure what can be the CPU savings that these smart mix can bring. We have a bunch of VMs deployed on uh, this host A. Similarly, we have a bunch of VMs uh, deployed on the other host. They are going to run Redis client VMs that each of these um, Redis clients running in these VMs are going to drive load against these uh, their corresponding Redis server VMs. We configure NSX using these performance snakes. So uh, all the traffic that goes from these Redis clients to the server and back, uh, it's all going to go through this NSX um, tunnel and they're going to exercise the performance snake here. And so that would actually simulate the existing world as it operates today, correct? That is correct. So that would be our baseline. For the system under test experiment, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to keep everything else the exact same. We're going to switch the NSX configuration that uses the performance NIC to use the smart NIC or what we call it as a DPU. So the things that we want to look at here is you know, the aggregate transaction throughput, and we're going to look at the transaction latencies and we are also going to look at um, the cache misses. So you're going to keep an eye on the cache misses, the last level cache misses on both the hosts. And lastly, we also keep a tab on the CPU cores that are being used on each of these different hosts to understand the CPU savings. Okay, great. So for the first experiment here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the workload scale between the performance NIC case and the DPU case the same. And we want to keep our focus on the CPU cores that can be saved. And for the second set of experiment, what I'm going to do is translate some of these saved cores into performance and measure what is the maximum workload scale that we can achieve with the same number of cores. In this particular chart, what I have here is on the x-axis, I have uh, the number of Redis streams that I'm using between, you know, that's all going between one ESX host to the other it increases from left to right here. As I increase the number of streams, you're going to look at the aggregate transaction rate, and we're also going to look at the core save on each of the hosts. So this y-axis here is this million transactions per second. That is the aggregate Redis transaction rate that we are doing uh, for you know, each of these uh, stream counts. And on the this y-axis on the right, the secondary axis is going to show this uh, core save for those. For the first, we, this light blue uh, is the baseline case, the world as it is. We are using the performance snake, and uh, we are measuring the transaction rate, the aggregate transaction rate. And you can see, as I increase the number of Redis streams, my transaction rate kind of goes up um, from 6 to 36. Yeah. I'm, I'm achieving like 14 million transactions per second um, when I'm using 36 Redis streams. On the other hand, for the DPU case, we either achieve the same performance or slightly better performance. Now, rolling this further forward, I'm uh, for the DPU case, that is the dark blue case, uh, this green uh, line is charting the number of cores that we save as we increase the number of data streams. So you can see when I'm using only six data streams, you know, I'm saving about two cores here. And as we increase that, you know, uh, at 24 streams, we are saving like seven cores and ab about 36 streams, we are 
saving about 12 cores here. Using the <clears throat> Monterey, uh, Monterey interfaces here, we're doing the same or slightly better in levels of performance with a significant savings in cores, right? Let's not underestimate returning 12 cores to a host. That, that, that's pretty significant at 36 streams. Yeah, yeah, totally. So um, I'm gonna double click on this last case here a little bit. And here is a pie chart um, that shows the breakdown of, um, you know, the usage of the different cores on this particular system, right? So at 36 streams, you know, you see about uh, the Redis VMs using up about 52 cores here. And um, to be able to, you know, keep that network traffic going, ESX uh, networking worlds are using about 12 cores here. And when we switch this from the performance NIC, or this is the baseline case, to the smart NIC case, you can see that these 12 cores were added back into the free. So you have a total of 16 plus 12, 28 uh, cores that are free here. Right. while well, your application is using the same number of cores here and achieving the same performance. We are saving about 12 cores out of, you know, 12 plus 52, 64 cores that we were previously using. That's about, you know, give or take 20, 20, 20% 20 of cores that we are saving here. Right? While one might think that this can save you in terms of the hardware costs and stuff like that, but this is, if you think about it, you can, you know, get rid of, let's say, uh, one out of five uh, hosts in a, in a data center, right? And the idea is like, you know, hey, we save these 12 cores, you know, we'll be able to use them for other apps or, you know, even for the same app and, you know, we'll be able to consolidate more. So then I'm excited to see that idea of what, what happens when we can reuse that. So in the next experiment, what we're going to do is like, we're going to get rid of some of these idle cores, make the system a little smaller and look at it, you know, in a different lens in terms of performance, can we translate these saved cores into performance? So in this case, we only have 48 cores on this particular host. For the baseline case, we are using 41 cores for the Redis VMs and for ESX networking, we are you know, using about seven cores. Now, in the, ca in the case of the DPU or the smart neck, we are able to uh, offload uh, this work to the smart neck. So that's not going to you know, um, use the CPU cores on the host side, uh, but rather the workload is configured in such a way that it can soak up these remaining seven cores also and translate this in terms of uh, performance. Here on the x-axis, the bars on the left are conception throughput uh, comparison uh, between the performance neck, which is this light blue, and uh, the, the DPU case, which is you know, the dark blue. And the other one is this cluster of bars here is the transaction latency. We were able to achieve 36% more transaction using 48 cores or uh, use it for the DPU based system in comparison to the perfect based system. Right? If you think about it, we had seven cores that were safe, right? seven out of 48, that's about 17%. And you, you might expect, hey, I, I should be able to see at least 17% more performance, but this, this is much more than that. So, and similarly, uh, the transaction latency, if you see, it goes down by about 27%. But um, how, how did this 17% more cores result in you know, so much more throughput or you know, uh, this kind of a transaction latency reduction? If you uh, double click on this, what we see is that um, when we started looking at the hardware performance corner data, we saw that the DPU case had about 24% less uh, last level cache misses. So the reason for this is, you know, all this ESX networking worlds that are running alongside these various VMs are polluting the caches because, you know, they get context switched in and, you know, and they access this data in a manner that, you know, um, the Redis VMs have more cache misses. Right? By offloading them and isolating them to the smart mix, what we have achieved is, you know, we have a, a much more cleaner uh, caches, last level caches that don't get polluted and that translates into uh, both more transactions per second and also more uh, and much better uh, transaction latency. So that's pretty neat. I mean, with uh, the release of Monterey, the idea here is now we're efficiently using the smart NIC cards to do networking work. And that allows us to take full advantage of the host for the workloads itself. And we see that it's not just a scale of getting more vCPUs, it's actually a scale of consuming that physical asset more efficiently too. And so that's, that's just amazing. Uh, I think those, those numbers are probably better than anybody would have expected. So, so bottom line, right? So 
the the way in which we are running we are using these tpus uh, we are running in a mode called uh, upt v2 or universal pass through version 2 um, so what this basically brings you is you get SRIOV like performance, um, you know, you get pass through like performance, but uh, the best part about this UPT V2 is like it also supports V motion and you don't lose, you know, typical VCR features um, that, you know, that one generally enjoys with the virtualized uh, or the emulation kind of modes. Well, that's awesome. Uh, Karthik, thank you very much for joining us today, sharing some of this great information and continuing uh, all of that significant work looking at measuring this for us. Uh, we're excited to keep in touch uh, and look forward to some Vroom blog posts, I understand, coming up with some more details around this too. Yeah, stay tuned. Thank you. Awesome. Well, thank you, everybody. Look forward to joining you at the next edition of the Extreme Performance Series video blogs.